Uh, hey everyone, this is going to be a tutorial on how to make a helmet shell, just a basic helmet shell in uh, MLI. Um, so what I recommend doing is if you're just kind of starting off and just trying to screw around a little bit with it, just download the trial version, don't try to download the 30-day uh, the version. Um, with this version you can't actually save, so that kind of sucks, but um, it's good just to kind of practice. Um, yeah, so the first thing you want to do is, uh, actually you kind of can see, is it's very similar to a uh, Rhino uh, layout. Like it looks pretty much like Rhino, um, except for the fact that there's all these really simplified tools on the side. Really, it's just the bare minimum of what you need to do surface modeling. Um, so up here you have your 3D view, uh, left to the top, front and right. To travel these on and off, you can just hit these in the bottom here, so now you can see all these different views, split, as well for. Um, yeah, so basically I can kind of show you how to start a helmet. The first thing you want to do is go to View, go to Image, and then up here you can add an image. And I'm just going to grab, I think I have pictures. A lot of stuff in this file. Let's see if I can. There we go. Um, so we'll import the side view. So the, basically, you can just take basic pictures of your helmet. Uh, open up the side view, and I want to go to right view. This is the side view here. Click on the origin, and then here you can see like it makes the head bigger. And I'm going to go out to about there. So now you can see the 3D view. This is where it is. Uh, so go add another helmet. Another view, sorry, in the helmet. Um, let's go with the front for now. And you got to keep in mind is that you're when you make the helmet in Studio, you uh, you will only need to make half of it. So it's just something to remember. It doesn't have to be a um, whole helmet when you import the image. It's you only need to make half, then you can just mirror it over after. So. Now I got the front and the right pins, so I'm going to do the top. I actually don't think I have a top view, but let's double check. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. And again, like what you can do is when you take this picture, bring them into Photoshop and edit them a bit and make them uh, stand out a little bit better so you can actually see them in, your, uh, in the document here. So this is the last one here. This is actually the wrong orientation, so what we'll do is just grab a little rotate thing on the top there and then put it around. This is simple. And again, this helmet that our group made is actually pretty simple. It's actually supposed to be a, a skateboard helmet. So, it, you can obviously tell it's better, pretty simple helmet. So, now that you have all these images in, what you can start to do is line them up properly. So basically, you can see immediately is that that's not the right place. Um, so, what we'll do is you can click it. Click each image and then you can actually uh, you get these little tabs and you can adjust it. And you can look at the 3D view and you can tell when you're pretty much close to them up there. Um, and again, to move stuff around, you just use the left click on the light to select um, the uh, clicking in your score wheel will allow you to pan like this. And then, um, or you can actually use these tools in each window. To, just if you're kind of confused or if you have a magic mouse or something. Um, what we have to do is just keep lining up these images here. I think this one is. This one's a bit big. That's way too big. As long as I get, I'm just going to get as close as I can here just so I can actually start to show you uh, how to use the tool. Yeah, that, that's, that's fine. Basically, you have it lined up. You kind of have a front, top, and right side view. So what you can do now is start to use your uh, your curve tools, preform tools, um, to start to get like an outline of the shape. So the best thing to do is kind of start from a point. Um, so I've already lined up the images on an origin, so I'm going to go ahead and just do that. And so right now, it's very difficult to kind of do stuff in space here. So what you can do is just rely on the views. So what you do is just quickly get as close as I can. Let's 
Let's go with that. Uh, and to exit a, a sketch, just hit right click on the mouse, similar to uh, um, Rhino. Uh, so basically I have this, and it's not exactly the shape that I want, so what I can actually do is turn on the uh, control points. Over there. Uh, go to edit, sorry, and then turn on the control points. Um, so now you can see the little points here, so I can do is start dragging these around. Where I'd like the curve to be. Okay, well, that's basically close enough. Um, so, what we can do next is do this front curve here. So, we'll do another freeform tool here. And as you see, if I come close to the thing, it snaps to the point. And that's because I have an object snap on right here. If you have grid snap on, it, it likes to click to the grid, and it's sometimes helpful to do precise measurements, but in most cases, it's not very helpful to do organic shapes like this. Um, so, yeah, uh, preform. Um, object snaps on, and I'll do is click to that point and roughly get this out of line. That's fine. And to exit, hit the right click again. So just edit this a little bit. If I'm not mistaken, you actually can select multiple points and align them. Definitely a way to do that. No, okay. Um, oh, sorry, yes, uh, you have this little uh, toolbar, or uh, handles on each side, and if you click it, you can actually flatten it. What that does is it makes a, uh, a straight line straight across. So it's sometimes helpful to do uh, like tangent points. Otherwise when you join this it's gonna look like a like a bum. <laughs> so uh, it's sometimes good to do that to make sure that it actually does um, give the correct shape after and then it has full continuity. So uh, what we'll do is we're sitting about seven minutes here so we'll, uh, or eight minutes and then I'll make this last curve and I'll show you how to uh, alter the surfaces and stuff like that. So that's done. So we'll just show the points, and we'll do, do the next three point. Click the front origin, and we'll go to the top view. Okay, so I know that the way that it just did this is doesn't work. Oops, I didn't mean it. So again, it's not like SolidWorks, you can't hit escape to do something you want to make sure you hit the right click otherwise, so you have to confirm it. So you can see this is the shape that is true, but I want it to curve downwards. So what we can do now is add these points and I can actually drag this down to where I need them to be. This is more like down here. So we can see that uh, it's not quite the shape I want, so I want to make sure that you can actually add points. So what we can do is click the line and add a point right there. We can curve it a bit more if I want. We can add another one here. Okay. I'm just going to get as close as I can though, I'm just too much to handle. As you can see, I need to still need to add points. So. Just an easy tool to work with, but as you can see, like, it's not quite really working out at the top here. So again, just drag it over as close as you can to your pictures. This is always good, just make sure you get the best pictures, otherwise it's not going to do well. It's not going to be easy. Uh, let's kind of fix this one a little bit. Down. Let me just join it here instead. There we go. So now I basically have like a little bit of a wireframe. It's not the best, but at least I can show you guys how to do the uh, 
circles. So um, if you didn't have the object snap on, you can tell that there's uh, you wouldn't actually get a proper join. You can actually see it right here. Otherwise, when you do the surface after, it's not going to work. So I want to make sure that, if, as you saw there, when I dragged it, it says on. So the front, front's joined, okay. So what we do now, let's get better views so that you can see. Construct and then uh, I think typically if you're doing a wireframe like this, it's more like a, use more of a network tool. So you can click all the curves of the network, and you can see it makes makes the curve. Like it's not uh, not that perfect curve. It's a bit of a so there's just an issue down here, and that's something that can be fixed by adding more of these uh, these rails. And uh, so if you want to actually Duplicate it, you hit control and you can drag it, and that will work too. Uh, go to the front and I can actually change this to fit a bit better. Yeah, and then like so, you can use that again to go through and, and update the, uh, the curve. But the front curve actually worked out pretty well, but the back is a bit of an issue. So, adding uh, wireframes. Works. Um, and if you go to the browser button down here, you can actually see what, what you've been making. Um, so you have curves, I hit that, I'll hide them. Surfaces I can hide. You can hide the uh, edges of the uh, shape, faces, and then the logics completely. And then you can actually, when you're, um, right now I currently have these all in red, but what you can actually do is you can edit the, uh, the color types of each thing. So like you might have, uh, your rails on the outside of a specific color, or you might have a shell of a specific color. So right now it's all default color. So if you click on the shell, you can see there's a option up here. And that's the right color. That just might be easier for helping to see what you're actually doing and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, um, if you guys do more complicated helmets and stuff, it's just a matter of taking your time and doing each surface individually. Um, you can also do, uh, you hit browser just to get rid of that. You can also do, um, different transformations and stuff like that. There's uh, the blending tools between surfaces, uh, the boolean tool that you can use to cut surfaces if you have a couple of them uh, combined. Um, you can use solids as well, but it's not as... Uh, you can't really do as much freeforms as, as you can with uh, surfaces. Um, you can also do some deformations and you can change the surfaces. Um, yeah, I don't have any curve to work with, but yeah, so you can have twist, you can have flow, um, you can do an array, which is like doing a specific pattern. Um, you use scale tools, if you accidentally make something too smaller to bake, or if you want to test out different ventilation holes, make some bigger, make some smaller, you can use those. Um, and there's uh, trim tools as well, so what you can do is, I can quickly draw. So I'll circle quickly just to show. Let's say if I, this is where you wouldn't you wouldn't put a vent here, but let's say you did. Take the trim tool. Um, so it asked me for what to cut. Here, trim objects to trim. Put that done. And again, if you read these, it'll actually tell you everything. You select the cutting cutting object. Here. Um, put the cutting, and it cuts it. Okay. And so you can do is you can use that for you can delete it if you want. So you delete it. Now you get a ventilation hole or something. I don't know. Um, you can also alter the surface and move it in. So let's say we just grabbed it, dragged it in or something. Um, if you want to do like an offset surface, and then you can just do a lock between those surfaces or something. Um, that's basically how you did it. 